Today, we are in Northern California, visiting beautiful Sausalito to learn about a Prop 68 funded project to establish an eelgrass protection and management plan for Richardson's Bay. Let's dive right in. My name is Curtis Havel, and I serve as the Harbor Master for the Richardson's Bay Regional Agency. My name is Rebecca Schwartz-Lesberg. I'm the president of Coastal Policy Solutions. Uh, we're working with the Richardson Bay Regional Agency as a consultant uh, to help implement the eelgrass protection and management plan. And this is a program that is being enacted as part of the overall transition plan that was adopted back in July of 2020 by the Richardson's Bay Regional Agency Board of Directors. What we're doing with this eelgrass protection and management plan is we've used a a spatial analysis approach and a spatial, marine spatial planning approach to manage how we are using Richardson's Bay. We're doing that by delineating an area called the Eelgrass Protection Zone. The nice sort of coincidence with what we're doing is if you look on a nautical chart at the area where we're going to be saying is a no anchoring zone, this also happens to be an area that at mean lower low water is five feet of water or less deep. So to implement this eelgrass protection and management plan, we have sort of four prongs to it. Um, the first prong is actually just finalizing the plan itself. So that's more of the policy side. That happens at the level of the Richardson Bay Regional Agency Board of Directors. Then we have this really robust outreach and education plan where we will be engaging with the people who are using the water, people who are anchoring on the water, um, but also the people in the local community. A lot of them don't know that there's this amazing resource out here. So presenting to local community groups, holding workshops, letting people know why these changes are coming to Richardson's Bay is a really big piece of what we're doing. The third prong is the regulatory changes that have to happen. So we'll be doing some changes at the local and regional level, and then also working with the United States Coast Guard to update the nautical charts and the coast pilot for the area, which helps guide mariners who are coming in. So the fourth prong is the wildlife and habitat monitoring that we're doing. We wanna know what's out there now, so the baseline wildlife monitoring, but also how is what we're doing affecting and hopefully benefiting and improving the wildlife out there? So we're working really closely with the Richardson Bay Audubon Center, which is actually just behind me um, over across the bay. They'll be doing some drone surveys of rafting water birds, and we'll also be doing aerial surveys of the eelgrass so that we can continue to quantify how those anchor scars are changing and hopefully recovering through time. So we have the finalization of the actual eelgrass protection management plan. We have the regulatory changes, education and outreach, and then the wildlife monitoring to make sure that what we're trying to do is actually working out here. The role of Coastal Policy Solutions in this is to really to knit that all together. So to make sure that as we are engaging with the community and doing regulatory changes and monitoring for wildlife, that that's coming together to a comprehensive and adaptive management plan for the eelgrass resources in Richardson's Bay. We have had a lot of stakeholders involved in helping to develop the eelgrass protection and management plan, really coming together to make sure that, that their unique perspective is included in this plan. The eelgrass protection zone that we're putting forward does not prohibit people from enjoying the area still. You can still get on your boat and, and sail through the area. You can paddle your paddleboard or a kayak through the area. You can swim through the area. You can still go enjoy it. It's just that this, this plan that we're putting in place says you cannot anchor there anymore. I think sometimes there's certain points of views that it has to be all or nothing. And I think this is an opportunity where we can have a joining of uses where we preserve and promote and protect that resource, but we still get to enjoy it. Um, on a personal level, it's a really big deal for me. I was an environmental studies major at UC Santa Barbara. And of course, when you graduate from a program like that, you always want to go out into the professional world and do something that's going to make a difference. So for me personally, this is a huge deal because we're on the cusp of something that, that's hopefully going to make a big difference. I'd like to thank both Curtis and Rebecca for their time and for their efforts on this project. We look forward to seeing the final outcomes. With that, I'm Kat Beheshti, California Sea Grant State Fellow with the Ocean Protection Council, signing off until next time. Thank you for watching.